Hey guys, Gassy TV here with another video build guide for Path of Exile. We are going to go back to the basics and play SRS, Summon Raging Spirits. However, we will not be doing this as a minion instability popcorn build. We're going to do this as an actual hit build. The hyper diversion is the build I'm currently playing and you might, as well, might already have noticed that the HP is pretty low. That's because we're only level 85. And um, what we're lacking right now is um, the HP nodes, all of these HP nodes. So in the end, this build will be actually sitting at around five and a half thousand effective life pool. And since we're Eldritch Batter, Mind of a Matter, that's multiplied by 1.428. That brings us just below 8,000 effective HP. So the biggest concern with this build that I've had in terms of survivability has been when you are rushing through the maps and then you have to summon your minions, then they start attacking even with Unleash. Uh, it can be a little bit tricky because sometimes if you encounter monsters and you're literally charging right into them, that could be a bit risky. So it's not tanky in, in that sense. So I'm going to show you some uh, map footage first. I'm going to show you Al Hesmin and then we're going to do a um, Awakener 8. Uh, Cirrus as well. So I'll go through a little bit more details of the build whilst we wait for the RP features from, um, uh, from the actual approach of um, Cirrus. Till then, we're going to show you this map. Uh, we're going to use our melee splash. This is currently the high budget version, a little bit low level, so the HP is uh, is a bit limited in the current version that you're looking at. Also, I don't have the highest level of gems sorted, so it's not perfected. However, with the uh, higher level gems sorted, the build will do about 60 million shaper DPS, and uh, that's pretty pretty obnoxious for an SRS build. And it's pretty cheap to get to this point, to be honest. In general. There's a lot of uh, stuff that I can improve on, such as having tier 1 hatred effects on my weapons, but I'll talk about that in detail. So there's plenty of areas where I can actually improve the efficiency of this build, uh, just straight up just being so much better. So what we're going to do is we're going to do Al Hesman, where I changed my melee splash for uh, multi-strike. Awaken multi-strike is pretty cheap right now. Without the Awaken multi-strike, the build does about 55 million shape per DPS, so it's honestly not that big of a difference. Um, don't have all haste for this fight, so we'll see how long this fight will last. So this is the DPS with the uh, hitting SRS. Um, pretty okay, I'd say. Pretty okay. Uh, the DPS that they're doing is um, pretty crazy because they're hitting about 10.82 times per second. They are 20 minions. That means you're hitting enemies over 216 times per second with all minions out. The uh, Spectres I'm using is uh, three for Intercharge Monkeys. Now the reason I decided to use three of these is because as soon as a boss or a fight is becoming attackable, uh, I would actually be in a position where all three charges would be applied to all my minions immediately. And this is to avoid inflate the DPS numbers. So the DPS shown in the PUB that I'll show you right now is actually based off non-conditional buffs. So if you look at the DPS in the configuration, the build is having minions at full life because of the cluster jewels. So we're in a situation with Feeding Friends is going to be active. We have cold exposure thanks to our weapon, which I'll show you. And I'm taking in the Frenzy Charge for minions because as soon as the boss is attackable, all 20 minions will get three charges because I have three Frenzy Charge monkeys. Uh, minions heal recently, yes, because we're spamming out the SRS. Enemy will be ignited, it'll be chilled because the, spec the SRS will have a 100% conversion uh, from physical to cold, as well as 50% conversion from physical to fire. Uh, and with that combined, the DPS is 75% being uh, cold and 25% being fire, unless I'm 100% mistaken. Enemies are shocked through uh, skater bots, so that's an 18% shock effect. They're intimidated through awakened melee physical. Uh, boss DPS series, of course, and we are lightning damage ee the enemies. Um, so looking at the um, the tree, it's pretty straightforward. What we're doing is skipping out of the wasted points to pick up HP and during bond, my uh, Eldritch Battery with HP, spec into Elemental Equilibrium, and then move over here for HP again, Sanctity for a little bit help with the uh, Energy Shield. Move over to a cluster, HP Aura nodes, also pick up Righteous Army. These three nodes will be the last nodes I'll ever spec in the build, so I currently don't have them, because uh, I'm not even done with the HP. You put a Thread of Hope, very large ring. This allows you to pick up the Spiritual Command, which increases their attack speed even further, but also to get Glancing Blows and Tireless HP nodes. This puts the build on a 66% block chance with 36 spell block, and that's not even with the perfect roommates, for example. 
pick up Devotion, another cluster, Grave Pact, and then, you know, if you want to, you can have Watcher Sight to give you a chance to block spell damage, which I would recommend to get that defense up a little bit. This is not even needed. You can get more damage for your minions if you want to instead, and then pick up the Life Notes. And the oiling for this will be a Ravenous Horde to increase your clear speed. Now, I'm going to go through the Cluster Jewels real quick before we do Awakener. Um, first off, for the high budget version, uh, we are doing um, Call to Slaughter, Race and Pillage, and Renewal. We don't really scale crit because it's not really worth it for SRS. And these jewels are actually not very expensive. Uh, but for a high budget version, you want to have all three on an 8 passive or, well, 9 or 8. Preferably 8, of course, because you kind of low on the skill points. Which means that you kind of want all three on an 8 passive large cluster, which is rather expensive. However, it is very easy to craft because of uh, the Race and Pillage being the only fire prefix. Call to Slaughter is a speed one and Renewal is a life one. So you can basically alteration, renewal, renewal and uh, all... Regal it and then harvest craft the remaining mods, which is not very hard to achieve in the current league. Uh, the medium clusters is a bit tricky here. Uh, I am using a megalomaniac to uh, get Vengeful Commander together with Seal Mender. However, if you're unable to find a megalomaniac that has Seal Mender and anything else that would work, like first among equals, Vengeful Commander, you know, any of those approaches. Uh, that would actually give you damage. The important one here is actually the Seal Mender. I took a Megalomaniac to have any other mod that would help me as well. Otherwise, you would just use a Medium Cluster that has a Seal Mender, because that helps the, the efficiency of your Unleash. The other cluster that is very crucial is a Blessed Rebirth Cluster. Blessed Rebirth makes it so that your enemies that you recently summon, or minions that you recently summon, are immortal or immune to damage for four seconds. This is crucial to make sure you have proper damage output. Uh, and then the other new node would be Renewal, so that's in a very cheap jewel, very easy to craft. The other cl large cluster is similar to the first one, and the two medium I have here are identical. They're both Vengeful Commander with first among equals, giving me an increased effect of my, uh, my auras. And the small clusters that I'm using is basically just any small cluster jewel with HP. And that's it for the uh, tree and cl cluster jewels for the, uh, for the high body builds. So I'm going to show you how this DPS looks being extremely squishy as we don't have our life notes sorted and gem levels are still lacking. We have level one on uh, most of our gems, but it's not going to be a problem. We did an Awakener 8. Um, we did an Awakener 8 uh, at level 73 with this build, having like no HP. Um, pretty fun, because the DPS is definitely already there. So just make sure you have your minions out and then that phase will be over. And moving on. Um, lovely this build, you can level it whichever way you want to. SRS, Skeletons, Ball Lightning Miner, whichever way you prefer. And um, I am going with double wands, which I'll show you for the high budget. Uh, you can use a staff, but I decided that it was easier to craft the, uh, the high budget dual weapons over crafting uh, the high budget staff equivalent. Uh, so that's why we're doing two, two wands. A little bit of a trick there as well. So I'll show you that in a minute. So this is the DPS on um, Awakener 8, which is pretty solid. I mean, the DPS is not bad. Could be better, but uh, like I mentioned before, the gem levels are still a little bit lacking, which will do quite a significant increase in terms of damage output. Other than that, it's, uh, it's a fun build to play. It's back to the basics. Haven't really done SRS in a proper way in, uh, in many years. Stay out of that, and we're gonna go into the last phase. It's fun to play SRS actually. This used to be the build I played uh, the most about six years ago, five or six years ago. Pretty much uh, played SRS every day. Uh, not so much these days. We can go into last phase. No, not letting me. How about now? There we go. Last phase. As you can see, I'm pre-summoning the 20 SRS. Getting some brands up, and as soon as the boss is attackable, this is happening, and you see that DPS. Absolutely not the best DPS in the world, but it does do the job right. That's a very nice lag. <laughs> I actually died in this. <laughs> Holy shit, the game froze, and then I was dead. Great game. Anyways, the DPS is there. Um... I've been having some lag issues, not sure what's causing it actually. That's a good question, if anyone in the in the YouTube video knows about these lag issues, because apparently I'm not the only one, but I've been unable to find, actually find a solution. 
to um, make it not happen. And then he's dead. And we get trash loot as per usual. Yay. So this is with uh, low-level gems for the most part on the Awakening gems, uh, which is the uh, step to have more damage after that. So I'm going to show you the gear and the gem links, and then we're going to talk about the low-budget build, and both of these POVs will obviously be linked in the descriptions below. So, um, where do we start? Obviously, we're using Darkness and Throne, which is uh, one of the best... Well, it's the best belt in the entire game for scaling minion damage. I will post a link in the description below to why that is. Because uh, I got an entire video for that. There's also a link in the description to how the Animate Guardian works. So instead of going through the details in this video of how the Animate Guardian is designed and how it's providing us with this much damage, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do the TLDR. He's wearing a Mask of the Stitch Demon. He's not cursing and he's using a Kingmaker. If you want to know more details about the King, the enemy guardian, check out the video in the descriptions below. So I mentioned before that we're using Tried Grip with four green sockets, which causes a lot of issues in terms of uh, colors and socket wise for the entire build. This is again for the higher budget version. We are using Dash with second wind in this with haste and a face run, which we don't really need, but it's there because we need four green sockets. The Vol Haste is the only one being used. We're not actually using the haste skill. We're only using the Vol Haste. The belt is darkness and throne. The boots is basically just life and energy shield with moon. Sorry, life and resistances and um, resist. Uh, life, resistances and and <laughs> movement speed. There we go. Jesus, that was hard to say. Uh, and in here, I'm using carrion golem with uh, feeding frenzy to proc the feeding frenzy buff. We're also using a blood vetting support to the race specters. Um, a couple of notes about the race specters. Uh, I weapon swap to cast portal however if i were to weapon swap uh my weapons it gives me a lot of spell levels to my race specters they would go below level 25 which means i would lose a specter every time i do that so the way i solve that uh, because i'm very lazy i always want to weapon swap for a portal uh was that i actually bought plus level of all skills weapons and minion skills just so I can weapon swap without the Ray Spectre dropping below level 25. So if you're having issues with that and you're like me, then that's a solution. This cost me like 50 or 60 chaos to do and it's definitely worth it. Um, the Ult's Uprising, Ravenous Horde Allocation. This is supposed to be Discipline Reserving No Mana. I'm sure you could do with Hatred and whatnot, but they are usually more expensive. But the Discipline is kind of crucial for the high budget version, otherwise the Energy Shield will be very low. But right now, as you can see, I don't have the discipline running. And the way you can calculate this is to take your HP, which will be 5.5k, and multiply that by 0 0.428. And you'll see that I would need 2.3k unreserved uh, mana or energy shield with Eldritch Battery. And with the discipline, I actually only have 1600, so I'm already a bit below. So the all uprising is very crucial to actually be using for this build. Um, the rings, life, resistances, and the sockets. Life resistance sockets and try to balance your resistances as well as the attribute requirements. In this case, dexterity, because you need to have 159 if you go for 21 gems, uh, 155 otherwise for level 20. Helmets, pretty straight, straightforward. You can use a devouring item. You can, of course, use uh, an, another uh, enchant. The carrion golem buff effect is actually a better choice for sake of damage output. Uh, but Raging Spirits, Duration, Damage, doesn't really matter. You can even try to ease up uh, your approach with uh, trying to skip the All Stripe Uprising by having like Discipline have a reduced reservation or other ores like Hatred having reduced reservation as well as stacking up Self-Control for Medium Cluster Jewels, for example, which drops the reservation of Discipline. So there's a couple of ways you can, tr you can play around with when it comes to the mana. Um, last but not least, we're going to talk about the weapons. As I mentioned before, you can do a staff for this. I didn't like that approach, so I went with two ones. They should always give plus level of all skills as well as minion skills. And then the best one would be to have hatred or effect. And as you can see here, I only have a tier two effect. And then I multi-crafted it for minion damage and a trigger. You only need trigger on one of your weapons. The other weapon don't really need trigger. So in this case, that's how I designed this one. Uh, we don't need a hunter one because we don't already get intimidate from awakened melee physical. And on the other weapon, I have Cold Exposure on hit, which I got and got a bit lucky with that one, and then augmented the Hatred effect. And this is actually really, really good, because we're already socket-starved quite a lot, so when it comes to the 
cold exposure, it's very, very nice to have on your weapon because that means that your uh, brand will actually apply that. And since I didn't need a trigger, I put my aspect of the avian here, which you can put on either, either one of your rings or your boots if you want to. Uh, but again, plus two levels to your minions uh, through all skills and minion skill, hatred effect, and then a benchcrafted minion damage on this one. So that's how you look at the weapons. The socket in the trigger, desecrate, flesh offering. That's all you need. And then I put discipline in there. Since I can't use a golem, since it has to be linked with a feeding frenzy, I just put the discipline in here. It's not going to be triggered or anyway with, because it's an aura skill. The links in the second weapon, I'm using Stormbrand Curse and Hit with Elemental Weakness being the absolute best one since we're doing quite a large portion of cold and a little bit of fire damage. Elemental Weakness is the best uh, curse, which is why we're not cursing with the Animate Guardian since the Animate Guardian would only apply level 12 and if I were to use Frostbite or uh, Flammability in that, it would actually result in a barely a damage increase. So I just decided not to bother, which would also require an Awakened Curse and Hit. So to cut down on the budget a little bit in the high body version, this is the approach. The uh, links in the helmet is obviously the Auras, Awaken Generosity, Anger, Summer Skater Bots with Hatred. So the flask is a seeding Sanchi flask uh, for life, uh, Rumi's, Quartz flask to make uh, clearing maps a bit smoother, and then whatever defense, I chose a Basalt, you can use a Jade or whatever, and then obviously a quick silver flask. So that's basically the, the gist of uh, the sockets um, and uh, gear for the high butter version. version. Convocation and Anime Garden is the ones that goes in the Unset Rings. And last but not least, the Support Gems for your SRS. Obviously a 2120 or 2123 SRS gem, uh, because you want the movement speed for the sake of clearing. You want to have Awaken Unleash. This is obviously, again, for the higher budget. Lower budget wouldn't use any Awaken Gems. So Awaken Unleash, uh, Awaken Minion Damage, Awaken Elemental Damage with Attack Supports, Awaken Melee Physical, which also applies to Intimidate, and then Awaken Melee Splash, which is pretty cheap, but it's really comfortable for clearing, which you will change for an Awaken Multi Strike. Again, Awaken Multi Strike is usually very expensive. This league is kind of cheap. It's even cheaper than the all soft pricing, so that's why I actually bought it. Otherwise, I wouldn't bother. Because a normal Multi Strike gem um, would be fr uh, more than fine. The difference between a Multi Strike and Awaken Multi Strike is about 6 million Shaper DPS. So without it, you're doing uh, about five, 54 million. So I'm going to show you the calculation here as well. The current POB in front of uh, here on the screen is showing the DPS with Awaken Multi Strike. However, this is without Avian's Might active, which is every four seconds. So that means you're doing 2.684494.9 million Shaper DPS times 20, which results in a 54 million Shaper DPS. Now, when the aspect of the Might is active, that is 3,085,165.8 times 20. That means you're doing almost 62 million Shaper DPS. So we can do that same calculation and I'll show you with a normal multi-strike as well to show you that it's not that much of a difference. You don't have to worry about it. But if you go in high budget, I don't see the reason why you wouldn't be pushing it. So without the aspect of the um, um, Avian's Might active, it's 2.389967.4 times 20. And that would be a 48 million Shaper DPS. And during aspect of the uh, sorry, Avian's Might effect, that is 2746678.9 times 20. And that's a 55 million Shaper DPS approach. The reason I try to show you both numbers is because if you leave after the Avian's Might up, which is not 100% uptime, this is going to be an inflated DPS showcase. I'm going to show you both numbers. You'll know exactly how much damage this build will actually be doing. So back to the Awaken Multi Strike, and I like to look at it this way. It's sexy. <laughs> Anyways, so that's the SRS build for the high budget version, doing over about 60 million Shaper DPS. The low budget version looks like this. Now, it is using uh, one cluster jewel. The tree is a little bit different. The PUB is in the description, so I'm just going to give you guys a quick rundown of it. Basically, it's the same approach here. You spec out. Obviously, the aesthetics, you know, it looks the same. Mistress, Unnatural, and Commander. Um, so you take the life. You also pick up the Lord of Dead and move out for EB uh, with the Mind of a Matter. Same thing there, Elemental Equilibrium. You actually don't use a Thread of Hope to keep the budget down. So you spec through Grave Pact. You spec in here. You anoint um, Ravenous Horde, which is actually not in any amulet because you can use whatever amulet you want there. Uh, but the amulet should be allocating Ravenous Horde. Same thing here, you go up for one cluster jewel into HP, R nodes, take both of these uh, minion damage nodes, don't bother the spiritual aid, 
and move down for some more blocking, which gives this build a 75% cap block on attacks with 40% to spells. And this is without the Watcher's Eye. And honestly, the Watcher's Eye with just spell block, when you're affected by discipline, it's like 20 chaos. So you could use that for the low body as well. But in case that were to increase in price because of this video or other people using it, I decided to take it out for this low body version. Now, the Cluster Jewels are always seen as very expensive. Uh, so to avoid that, I'm showing you some insanely cheap Cluster Jewels. The first one is a 12 passive Cluster Jewel uh, with minion damage. First off, that is extremely cheap. It is only using Renewal and Call to Slaughter, which are very easy to craft yourself, and it's very cheap to purchase. So that's why I'm including a Cluster Jewel in this build, because there's a medium cluster that you have to use for this. So it's a, the worst kind of large cluster jewel you could ever possibly imagine to use in the build. It's stupidly cheap, and it's not a problem to use one of these. It's a lot of wasted nodes to use, but they're very good for this build because it's low budget, right? So Call to Slaughter and Renewal. We have a, a small cluster with HP. Now, Fetal can be expensive. There are plenty of other life-providing uh, notables for low, small cluster jewels that you can use instead. And you can use a three passive to make it even worse uh, to lower the price. So that's one way of doing the small cluster. The same thing goes in the second small cluster. So to the medium cluster jewel, you have to get Blessed Rebirth. Now again, in the current league in Harvest, you can basically just take a jewel that is a medium with uh, the six passives, which is the worst medium cluster you can get, and then get a Blessed Rebirth, and then you can literally just augment, um, I think it's uh, life on it, right, to get the other one, to get renewal. So it's not very hard to get both of them. But for the sake of keeping the budget and everything down the best I could for this showcase, this is the shittiest jewel you could ever possibly imagine to use for this build. You have to get Blast Rebirth because that makes your minions Im immune to damage for 4 seconds when they've summoned. I think it costs like 5c or something. That's how cheap it is. Um, the skills are about the same. Uh, in this case, I'm showing it on a plus 3 to all fire skills weapon, which you can basically buy just purchase. It's double influence in the PUB, actually. It shouldn't be that. So you basically just purchase a staff that can roll plus three to all fire skills. You can alteration craft that and then bench craft the minion damage and then you have your weapon. Obviously you can make this so much better. This is the trashiest trash you can possibly imagine. Uh, gems, pretty straightforward. Melee splash, damage full life, elemental damage with attacks, minion damage, unleash, SRS. And then obviously switch the multi strike for melee splash uh, for sale target. And the links of this, the uh, your body armor don't even need to be six link. You can use a... 3 link, 3 link to use the same setup with the Spectres. It's actually a socket open on this one. Ray Spectre with Blood Magic needs to be linked. Uh, Carry and Golem with Feeding Frenzy need to be linked. The Animated Guardian don't need to be linked. Uh, to Feeding Frenzy, you'd rather not. So how you design your sockets here, it doesn't really matter. You can put a portal gem if you want to in here. Auras will be remaining the same, but I'm removing the Awakened version. So Generosity, Hatred, Skater Bots, Bone Chill. In this case, we are dropping Anger from the build, but allowing us to use Bone Chill, which allows us to do even more cold damage in the configuration because the enemies are chilled. So if, if you look at the uh, Bone Chill support effect chill, just leave that open and it will calculate it manually by itself. You can check that by checking away Bone Chill and look at the DPS, that the DPS is actually significantly changing by about 50,000 per SRS thanks to this combination. Mobility, same thing there. Triad gloves, four green, dash, second wind linked. And if you do this, make sure that you do not link second wind with your vol haste. And then you have your desecrate in this one. If you're using a staff, if you're using a um, two, uh, two uh, weapons instead, then you can move the desecrate to the trigger and put face run or something in there instead if you want to. Similar uh, setup with the curse. When you're using staff, then you just take the curse and hit setup and add convocation that you self cast in there. And the Onset Rings would then, in this case, be Flesh Offering, and the other one with Discipline. And obviously, Aspect of the Avian somewhere on the gear. Gear-wise, it's the exact same thing. However, the Sack of Wolves Nest needs to have 7% or higher aura reduction in the low budget build. Whereas in the high budget, it needs to be, I think it was 8 or 9%. You'd have to double check POV, 8 or 9% on the aura reservation for the high budget. Whereas the low budget is okay on a 7%. Um... The low budget is also using a conqueror sufficiency to help the mana push a bit, so you don't have to go for a crazy sack of walls. However, if you get a higher rolled sack of walls on the reduced mana reserve, which is a little bit more expensive, then you can drop the conquer sufficiency to get better damage from the jewels. So, last but not least in this video, to not drag this out further, the single target DPS of the low budget version 
not using splash without the aspect the uh, avian's might would be 736,960.4 times 20. That's a 14.7 million shaper DPS in a low body build. With aspect or avian's might, the build is doing 832,669.5 times 20. That's a 16.6 .6 million. So I would say that you're safe to say that you're doing around 14 to 15 million shaper DPS uh, with this build uh, in a low budget, and you're doing around 60 million on the high budget version. So that's all I have to say. Uh, it's been very fun to uh, to play uh, SRS for once. Uh, it's been many years since I actually bothered doing this. And um, I hope you guys will enjoy it as well. So make sure you hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and let me know in the comments below if you guys have any solutions to the, to the freeze issue I've been experiencing. And uh, also, we're going to be looking into doing a dark pack build that I believe we can push to about 100 million shaper DPS in the coming days. So till next time, stay safe and keep rocking.